All right, here is part two of the video guide for this lesson. Um, a lot going on in that first problem in terms of just probability and then conditional probability. We'll see a little bit more of that here. Um, we're going to make our own um, modified area model, and then we'll see that introduction to a two-way table in that last problem here. Um, so let's take a look at this problem. You're going to again see two events happening in this problem. Um, on the midway at the county fair, there are many popular games to play. Uh, one of them is flip to spin or roll. Uh, first, the player flips a coin. If a heads comes up, the player gets to spin the big wheel, which has 10 equal sections on it, uh, three red, three blue, four yellow. If the coin shows tail, the player gets to roll a cube with three red sides, two yellow sides, and one blue side. If the wheel spin lands on blue, or if the blue side of the cube comes up, the player wins a stuffed animal. All right, so the first thing, we're going to try to draw a modified area model to represent this game. Uh, modified area model is, again, kind of what this, it's what this is right here. That is a modified area model, and so we're going to try to make one ourselves here with this game. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle here, and I'm going to split it down the middle. And that is going to be my um, heads or tails from flipping the coin. So my first event is going to happen. Um, we have heads and we have tails. And then it's kind of like what we did with almost our um, our tree diagram here. It then begins to split differently. See the red one here split differently than the blue one here. Same thing is going to happen here. Heads is going to split up differently um, than tails is because the events are different if you uh, flip a heads or you flip a tails. And so um, if we get heads, you have um, you have that chance to spin the big wheel, uh, three red, three blue, and four yellow. And so I'm going to try to split that up. It's not going to be perfect, um, but this is going to be red, blue, and yellow. And there is, uh, for red, and I'm going to try to leave the boxes somewhat, it's not perfectly modified, but um, I should start here and say you have a one-half chance to get heads, you have a one-half chance to get tails. Uh, looking at your chance to get red, if you got a heads, it is um, three reds, there's ten equal sections, three of them are red, so there's a three in a ten chance that you get red. There is a 3 in a 10 chance you get blue, and then there is a 4 in a 10 chance that you get yellow, um, but 4 out of 10 reduces down to 2 fits. All right, and I'm kind of keeping them out of these boxes right now because I'm thinking we're going to have to um, write something in these boxes at some point. Um, and now if you get a tails, that's the second event. Things are a little different. Um, you get a cube. You get to roll this cube. Um, which has three red sides, two yellow sides, and one blue side. So there's six sides there, six sides in total. Three of them are red. I think it's red, blue, yellow again, right? Yeah. And so we get, again, red, blue, yellow, but our probabilities are going to be different. This time, if it's red, um, you have a three out of six chance, three red sides, six total, and that's a one-half probability for red. For blue, uh, or yellow actually will be next, two yellow sides, that's two out of six, that's one third. And then you have a, I believe, one in six chance, yeah, one in six chance for blue. And really the red one should be the biggest, but we're going to just kind of separate it. We'll make the red one a little bit bigger, uh, blue is going to be the smallest, and then yellow is going to be somewhat bigger as well. All right, and then that's kind of my modified area model. Uh, tails red is right here. Tails blue is small. Tails yellow over here. Uh, heads red, heads blue, heads yellow. Um, and then we can actually use this um, modified area model now um, for part B. So it says, suppose that you know that Tyler won a stuffed animal. Discuss with your team and then shade the appropriate parts of the area model. All right, so if he, um, if he won a stuffed animal, that means he got either um, heads blue or tails blue, because that's the only way you get stuffed animals if you get some kind of blue. Um, so this right here is a winning one, and this one right here is a winning one. All right, so that's kind of like my change in my sample space now. It's going to have to be one of these blues. And it says um, shade the appropriate part of the area model and then help figure out the probability that he started off by getting heads. And so it's really similar to what we were doing at the end of the last problem. We're going to say that 
this blue, these shaded areas is my total uh, total sample space. But then we're going to look at just the case of heads blue. Um, so our total sample space is going to be our denominator. And then a heads blue is going to be our numerator. And so to figure out what that denominator is, we got to do one half times one sixth. One, oh, I got to switch back to my pen. Uh, one half times one sixth gives you one twelfth. Um, and that's just from tails blue. And then heads blue is going to be one half times uh, three tenths, which is going to be three twentieths. Uh, but we'll do that multiplication still. One half times three tenths gives you three twentieths. And then uh, we have to add these two up because we want them to be in our denominator, um, which we could do uh, three twentieths plus one twelfth. Common denominator is going to be 60 here. Um, and so to get this one here to be 60, we had to multiply it by three. So that becomes nine sixtieths to multiply or to get this one to be um, a de common denominator of 60. You got to multiply it by five. So this is five sixtieths. And then we get 14 sixtieths. And that's going to be the denominator of fraction because that is just the probability of getting something that's blue. That's the probability of kind of winning a stuffed animal right there. Um, so 14 sixtieths is going to be the denominator. And then the numerator is going to be the specific case of getting a blue heads because it says what's the probability of getting a head knowing that uh, he got a stuffed animal or knowing that he landed on a blue. Um, and then that probability is going to be one half times three tenths again, which is three twentieths. So we have this awkward fraction again. We have, and I don't want to, I'm just going to use a different color to circle it right now. We have the probability of heads blue, and then we have the total probability of it just being blue. Um, we need to try to reduce this down or make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to do keep change flip here. So 3 20ths, keep the numerator, change division to multiplication, um, and flip the denominator. So this is 60 over 14. Um, things actually work out pretty nicely here. Um, and we end up getting, uh, we can multiply it out and reduce it down, but I always see it like this where um, the 20 and the 60 are going to divide. So this is going to become 1, and this is going to become a 3. And so then when you actually multiply this out, this becomes 9 over 14. Really, I just did the division beforehand before the multiplying um, and got this is my answer, which is 9 fourteenths chance that he rolled uh, a 9 fourteenths chance that he got heads knowing that uh, he had to land on some kind of blue. Move into this last one, this introduction to the two way table here. Um, and I'm going to try to go through it somewhat quickly. Um, because you'll see kind of how this works out. Um, it's really just like you take the information that they give you and then fill in the rest. Um, and so we know uh, what this is saying is that they constructed a, a conducted a survey surveying 200 senior class students. 78 of the students had access to car on a weekend. 54 students had regular chores assigned at home and 80 students neither had access to a car nor had regular chores to do. Um, so we're going to try to fill out this table just with that information. All right, 200 total students, 78 of them had access to a car, 54 of them have regular chores, and then 80 have neither chores nor a car. All right, and the first part is you're going to be to copy this table and fill it out. And so that's, I have this posted here to do it a little bit bigger. All right, first thing, um, 78 students have access to a car. All right, so when you're talking about car or no car, you know that 78 had access to a car. Now we can't put that in the no chores car or the chores car because we don't know if these 78 are doing chores or not. We just know that there's 78 people uh, who have access to a car. So I like to put it out here so it's under car, but it's not in the chores, uh, chores or no chores. All right. Um, and then we have 54 students had regular chores assigned to them at home. Again, uh, we're talking about chores here. We don't know if these 54 have a car or don't have a car, but we know there's 54 students doing chores. So I put that 54 outside here. Um, and then we say that there are 80 students who neither had access to a car nor do regular chores. That one actually does get to go in here. So they are no car, no chores. There's 80 of them. All right. 
Um, now it's just time to fill in some other information. So we know 78 students have access to a car. That means 120, 20, 122 students do not have access to a car because there's 200 students surveyed in this. All right. Same kind of thing goes for chore. If 54 students uh, are doing regular chores, that means 146 students are not doing chores because there was 200, uh, 200 kids studied, 54 of them doing chores. That means the rest are not doing chores according to the study. All right. That two pieces of information are super helpful now um, because now we get to start filling out the rest of the chart. All right. Um, if we know that there are 146 students uh, not doing chores, that means 80 of them have no car and that means 66 of them. That's uh, that's terribly written. 66 of them have access to a car. Right. Because 66 plus 80 is 146. Um, if we know that there's a total of uh, 122 students who have no car, uh, then we would say that 80 of them don't do chores, uh, 42 of them must do chores, because then we can say 42 plus 80 gives me the 122. All right, and then that leaves one last cell. If that one's 42, this one must be 12, because 12 plus 42 gives me the 54 number that I'm looking for. All right. And then that's pretty much uh, my filled out two way table here. Really just this idea that you know some information like the 78 and then you can derive this other information like 122 saying, well, there's 200 total students, 78 of them are doing it, 122 aren't. And then just filling in the table here to match those numbers. All right. It's kind of like we have these parameters and we have to meet them. Okay. Now we can go to B, which is going to introduce this word here to us. This type of table is called a two way table often used to organize information, calculate probabilities. Two-way tables often include row column totals, um, which is like row column totals. This is 78 is a column total. 146 is like a row total. If you have not already done so, add the row column totals to your two-way table. Is there association? So this is going to be the actual question. Is there an association between car privileges and having regular chores um, for this weekend? So they're going to really be asking here, um, are regular chores and car privilege independent from one another, or are they, um, are they associated? And so we have to talk about first, just the probability that you have a car. Um, so there are 78 students out of, so probability of a car, 78 out of 200 students have access to a car. Now, if we can say, um, given chores, given chores, the probability of car privileges, if it's the same as this, then they're independent. If it's not the same as this, then they are associated somehow. And so we're going to talk about now the probability of car, but we're going to say given chores. So it's conditional. And I'm just going to do my equal sign down here. All right. Um, so the uh, sample space is now changed. We are now talking about, uh, we are given chores. We're given chores, and then we're going to look at the probability of cars over chores. Um, and so we're looking at all of chores is 54. And then car with chores is 12 out of 54. Um, and then just to see this in terms of percentages, because these are two very different numbers, but it's kind of hard to see, 78. Uh, over 200 is different than 12 over 54, but let's put it into terms of uh, uh, percentages. So 78 divided by 200 is going to give me 39%. So there's a 39% chance out of the 200 students, there's a 39% chance that one of them is driving a car. Now, if you know the students are doing chores, then, so 12 divided by 54, gives you a 22.2% chance. So if you know a student is doing, or if you know somebody surveyed is doing chores, the probability of them having access to a car is actually lower. Um, and they're not, they're not independent, they are associated, but um, the probability actually goes down of owning a car in this survey if you are regularly doing chores. Um, it's just a, a good way here in this two-way table to see, well, what this two-way table is, how they collect the data, and then how they could use even this small, tiny data uh, to come up with probability of things happening. Um, if you have questions, I know this lesson is kind of a lot to take on. 
uh, please email me and ask those questions. I'm happy to do further explanations.